Cold email deliverability is the lifeblood of BDB lead generation. But in 2024, hitting the inbox really isn't as simple as it used to be. In this video, I'm gonna be pulling back the curtain on every strategy that we know to make sure we're hitting the inbox for our clients. My name is Georgie and I'm the founder of Borks. We help book over 6,000 B2B meetings in just the past year alone for our clients. And in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to consistently hit the inbox. So if you wanna stop wasting money on accounts and softwares that are not gonna help your deliverability, then keep watching this video. So. Let's get into it. The first thing we have to talk about is the content of your actual email. Now, this is actually where the majority of people make their mistakes, so just listen carefully. Now, the golden rule here is that in any cold email, the only thing that you should be sending is plain text. This means no images, no videos. This means no links, no files, nothing that you can download. You shouldn't be doing anything along those lines. You shouldn't have a fancy email signature. You shouldn't have any LinkedIn links, absolutely nothing. Now the goal here is simple. Google and Outlook don't want their users to have malicious emails in their inboxes. Now, in order to be malicious, you need to have some sort of risk. You need to either send a file or an image or something that can be potentially misleading and or uh, a virus or something dangerous. If you're sending out plain text, that will absolutely minimize the odds of you having anything malicious in your emails. So golden rule, do not send anything that is not plain text. And the next thing I wanna talk about is the avoidance of spam words. Now, spam words are words that Google and Outlook deem riskier than others. Now, whenever you have the chance, you want to try your absolute best to have as little words as possible in your copy. Now, the thing is that in some particular situations, it is physically impossible to convey your value proposition without having spam words. Like for example, in our situation, we have a client in the agency which offers small business funding to all sorts of different companies. Now, his offer obviously involves getting a business funding, getting a business money, giving them some sort of cash infusion. Now, there is absolutely no way that I can write an email talking about small business funding without using words words like money or funding or capital or resources or things like that. These are words that traditionally are considered spam words, but in his particular situation, there are no other choices. My main point with this section is you want to keep the amount of spam words in your code emails as low as possible. But that doesn't mean that if you have any spam words, you're just going to spam immediately, right? It's not one of those binary things. So try your best to have as little spam words as possible, but just know that if you do need to have them, it doesn't mean that your campaigns are definitively not going to work. Now you can use a tool called mail meteor to check how many spam words you have in your copy. And if there are ways that you can get the same meaning without the spam words, then definitely do that. Now we need to talk about copy relevance. Now copy relevance is often a factor that people overlook because it doesn't have a direct impact on the deliverability like the other things on this list. The thing is that people don't understand Google and Outlook spent millions of dollars and hundreds of engineering hours to develop these advanced algorithms that can detect spam. Now you need to understand by definition, spam is irrelevant or inappropriate messages sent on the internet to a large number of recipients. Meaning if the emails that you are sending are actually relevant and they are actually going to relevant people and they are helpful by definition, you are not spamming. And by definition, you do not need to worry about spam filters because you're not doing anything wrong. The thing is that a lot of people take the spray and pray approach where they contact thousands and thousands of people just hoping that one person happens to be the right one, sees that email and ends up saying yes. Okay. Now cold email is not like running ads in the sense that you're not trying to see how many people will say yes after you show a million ads to random people. Cold email is a lot more similar to something like door knocking where every single door you're knocking on is a real relevant prospect who might want your service. Okay. Just imagine trying to sell uh, snow shoveling services to people who don't have any snow in their driveway. No matter how many people you ask, 
it's just not going to work. And unfortunately, that's what most people are doing with code email. And unfortunately, that's why they end up going to spam a lot of the time. Okay. Hey guys, we're going to get right back to the video in just a minute, but real quick, do you want a done for you cold email lead generation solution that is able to consistently book you meetings with your ideal buyers? We just helped Morty from your business now book over 30 clients in just two months of working together and Avi from daily dose of data science, get over 40 calls in our first 10 days of sending cold email. Now, if you guys want a consistent flow of buyers on your calendar, you can book a meeting with me and my team in the description below. Okay, talk soon. Now, I want to give you guys a real relevant example. Just recently, I launched a campaign targeting the Inc. 5000 for myself in our agency. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, the Inc. 5000 is a list of the 5000 fastest growing companies in the United States of America. Now, out of that 5,000 companies, only 1,600 companies were actually relevant to us because we're only looking to work with companies that have 10 to 50 employees who have a B2B service and that does not include anything B2C, that does not include any product-based businesses and doesn't include anyone outside of those revenue or not revenue, but headcount markers, okay? Meaning if we were to just take that first list of 5,000 companies and we were to just contact all of them, over 66% of the original list that we had would have been completely invalid. And if 66% of the prospects that you're mentioning or you're messaging are invalid, well, then you're obviously going to have bad results because you're literally contacting the wrong people. Okay. So what we ended up doing, we took all those data, put it into clay, found out which ones were B2B, found out which ones were service-based businesses and only contacted those people. Now we got to talk about buying domains from the right provider. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Porkbun and Cloudflare are the two most popular places to buy domains for cold email. Now there are other registrars like Namecheap and GoDaddy, which other people like to use. But in my personal opinion, you should never stray away from Porkbun or Cloudflare. Now, the reason is, is we're not even sure exactly how much of an impact your registrar has on your cold email deliverability. But one thing is for sure, it definitely has some sort of an impact. Now we got to talk about using the correct cold email infrastructure. So what I mean by infrastructure is where you're actually getting the accounts that you're using in order to do cold email. Okay. Now what our preferred recommendation will be in a couple of months is almost certainly going to be different to what it is now, because these things are constantly changing in the world of cold email at the current moment. What we're doing is about a 50 50 split between Google and outlook. And we're getting all of our accounts through third party resellers, for example, cheap inboxes and inboxology. Now I don't want to go too in depth into what email infrastructure is specifically in this video, because you know, it would be like hours and hours long. But if you are interested, you can go take a look online. I, we have a video about a cold email masterclass. And in there, we have a very detailed rundown on how email infrastructure actually works at the current moment, though, I wouldn't recommend anyone use any private infrastructure. I would say stick to public infrastructure through a reseller. And that's pretty much what we're doing right now. If you make a mistake here, I mean, this is gonna be detrimental. None of your campaigns are going to work. So just make sure you're choosing the right infrastructure setup. Okay. Now we got to talk about testing, whether you have good deliverability or not. Now, if you cannot quantify something, that means you cannot test it. If you cannot test something, you cannot get better at it right now. This isn't just cold email. This applies to all aspects of life. If there's no way for you to quantify something and for you to measure something, you can't physically get better at it. Okay. Now in cold email, the pretty much the most popular way that people test deliverability is using this thing called a domain reputation score. Now, if you use something like smart or something like instantly, you've probably seen that number in the email accounts tab in your email sequencer, where it'll tell you that, Oh, your account is on a scale of one to 100% in terms of domain reputation. Okay. Now the truth is, is that is a totally arbitrary number and it doesn't really mean anything. Okay. The real way to test deliverability and the only true way to test it is using an inbox placement test. Now an inbox placement test is basically a sequence of emails that you send from an email account to other email accounts to see how often you're inboxing. Now, typically an inbox placement test involves sending eight emails, four of which go to Google, four of which go to outlook. The total score of how many of those emails hit the inbox is your email deliverability score for that email account. For example, if I run an inbox placement test from George at Borks.io, right? Let's say I'm, I'm running an inbox placement test. I'm going to send out eight emails and let's say out of the eight emails I send four go to spam. 
That means I have an inbox placement score of four out of eight, which translates to 50%, meaning I'm inboxing 50% of the time. Okay. Now in that particular situation, that email account would be considered burned because half the emails that's sending is going to spam. Now we personally use a provider called email guard. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, email guard is one of the cheapest and most effective email deliverability testing tools on the market. They don't just offer deliverability tests. They offer a suite of tools for deliverability. So I would really recommend checking them out. We're also partnered with them in lead Academy because we actually have a custom built out sequencer, which basically connects smart and connects email guard. So I can effectively launch these tests without having to actually set, sit there and send the emails out. Now, again, I don't want to make this video sound like a commercial, but that is what we use in reality. And email guard is the infrastructure behind the email deliverability test and lead Academy is the infrastructure behind the automatic campaign creation. So that's kind of the setup that we use to test our deliverability. I know I just said so much information, but if you guys are interested, just go to lead Academy and check this out to see how this inbox placement tool works. But every single week, in essence, what we do is we run an inbox placement test on all of our accounts and we see whether there's been a big drop in performance on that email account or on all of our email accounts. We'll run about 2000 inbox placement tests a week because we have about 2000 email accounts for ourselves. And then we also have client accounts, but we'll run all those inbox placement tests. We'll see what the results are. And if the results are dipping, it'll notify somebody internally in our company. Okay. And then when we see that accounts are dipping, if they go beyond a certain threshold, which we like to do at 75%, we'll take that account, we'll quarantine it and try to fix it, or we'll just flat out replace it. Okay. So that's how we do inbox placement tests in the agency. And I'd really recommend getting something similar set up for you because otherwise there's no way of knowing whether you have a deliverability issue or not. Okay. Now let's talk about warm up. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, warm up is the act of taking your email accounts, put them, putting them into a pool and having those email accounts interact with other email accounts in that pool for the sole purpose of generating real email activity. Now, the idea is if you warm up your email accounts, they're going to look a lot more realistic, like real email accounts. So, you know, these spam filters that Google and Outlook put out won't suspect anything. Okay. Now all of the popular email sending tools offer free warm up. Smarlead instantly does it, but just for the sake of the video, I am going to refer to Smarlead as the example. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know right now in the cold email world, there are a lot of people who are talking about, you don't need warm up. Uh, it's no longer good. There's spam traps. There's this and that, right? There's a lot of people saying that warm up doesn't help anymore. Now we did an extensive test doing that exact test, which is seeing does warm up actually make a difference. Okay. I think we had about 500 email accounts and this test lasted about two months where we really did a very, very in detail test of what happens if you turn off warm up. Okay. Now what we realized is turning off warm up will give you a very minuscule bonus in performance off the bat, but overall it's going to lead to much quicker, like email account burning. And overall, it's not something that's going to make your email accounts last for longer than a week or two. What we ended up doing is those 500 email accounts where we ran the test with, they all ended up going to zero and then like zero deliverability score. And we had to turn off the entire test. We took all 500 email accounts. We put them in the warm up pool, gave them two weeks. And then as soon as they were out, they had hundred percent deliverability again. I would say that it's pretty clear. Warm up definitely makes a big impact. I would say everyone should do warm up. And for us, we have very simple warm up settings. We do two weeks of warm up, max 35 emails per day. We scale it up by three emails per day. Our randomizer is set to 25 to 35 and we always turn on auto adjust. And again, those settings are specifically for smart lead. And there you have it. Those are the most common things that you need to look out for if you want to have good deliverability. Now, again, this video is not a conclusive guide on how to maintain perfect deliverability. If I were to make a video going over everything, it'd be several hours long and trust me, you would not be watching it. Okay. So look, you can go ahead and try to attempt all this yourself, or you can go and partner up with a firm like ours. That's already booked 6,000 plus qualified calls for our clients in just the past year alone. And then you don't have to go and spend countless months testing different tools, blowing three email accounts and probably wasting hundreds of dollars in the process. So if you are a BDB company already doing 30 K per month or over in revenue, and you do want to scale using code email, but you don't want to figure it out on your own, then consider booking a free outbound audit. All we're going to do is discuss your ideal client profile and whether we can target them offers and scripts that we can use to target your ideal client. And if we've ever worked with a company similar to yours, we'll show you what we did for them. But 
Either way, you either get 30 minutes of free advice or we end up working together and then you're definitely gonna get a bunch of bookings, but either way, you're in the green. So with that being said, if you are interested, book a call below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Until next time. Until next time.